My name is Kushi Patel, and today I'll be presenting on the role of assisted technology in improving global health. A little bit about me before we get started. I'm a rising sophomore at Clemens High School. I serve as an officer for my school's host club, and I'm also on the varsity speech and debate team. Outside of school, I volunteer for ROSAP and BPA, both of which are organizations that aim to promote the advancement of specially abled people through things like medical research, advocacy, and the distribution of assistive tech. My future plans include pursuing a career in either pediatric oncology or neuroscience. Let's start by understanding what exactly assistive technology is. It's defined as an umbrella term covering the systems and services related to the delivery of assistive products and services. So essentially, this just means any sort of technology or device that makes tasks easier and more convenient for people who are impaired. At some point in our lives, we've all used a type of assistive technology. As children, we may have used walkers to learn how to walk without falling down. In our old age, we may need to use canes or wheelchairs. So as you can see through this progression, assistive technology can be used for any age. It can also be used for a variety of reasons. Let's dive a little deeper into these, starting with cognition. An example of assistive technology in this field is word predictor software. Whether it be communicating with friends via text or typing up an essay, you may notice that your device offers a suggestion for the next few words that you are about to type. This is helpful for people with cognitive impairments like dyslexia because it helps them in the tasks of spelling and forming written sentences. Similarly, assistive technology such as speech tablets can be used for children with autism who struggle with verbal communication. In healthcare, it's especially important that a patient feels heard and understood by their doctor, and tools such as these are crucial in making that happen. Moving on to vision, this can be as simple as glasses or screen readers with the speech-to-text function for those who are visually impaired. For mobility, crutches, wheelchairs, prosthetic limbs, these are all things that aid those whose physical impairments hinder their ability to move in their everyday lives. These kinds of technologies reduce the chances of accidents and allow people with physical impairments to maintain good health. And lastly, we have hearing. Innovative technologies like bone conduction hearing aids can allow people to hear for the very first time. So now that we've understood what it is, let's look at why assistive technology is important on a global scale. Around 15% of people in the world live with some form of disability. That's almost 1 billion people globally. Specially abled people face structural factors that hinder their access to healthcare. Firstly, there's a lack of easily accessible resources and infrastructure for the people who need it most. Specially abled people may face factors like poverty because they're less likely to be employed due to discrimination, which forces them into a lower socioeconomic standing, impacting their quality of healthcare as well because they aren't able to access proper facilities and resources. 90% of children with disabilities in developing countries do not attend school. This is largely due to the fact that these countries lack an adequate amount of assistive technology to aid these children. Without proper education, these children may grow up to live in poverty or be reliant on dangerous jobs to make a living. The global demand for assistive technology is more than apparent. Globally, more than 2.5 billion people currently need one or more assisted products. More than 3.5 billion people will need at least one assisted product by 2050. And in many low income countries, only five to 15% of those who need assistive technology are able to obtain it. So this shows that this intense global demand is being fulfilled at a less than satisfactory level. So why exactly is this happening? Let's take a look at some of the barriers that hinder access to assistive technology. First, we have the factor of availability. The creation of assistive tech is limited by the extremely specialized nature of the industry that produces it, usually on a demand-based level. This means that assistive tech is less likely to be distributed to the public sector, where it can be most conveniently reached by the people who need it, which leads us into the second barrier of accessibility. Because assistive tech is not made easily accessible, people who are seeking it often have to travel far distances to facilities that do provide assistive tech. And even when there is both avail availability and accessibility, there remains the problem of affordability. According to the World Health Organization, even in high income countries, assistive products are often not included within health programs and can result in high out of pocket payments for those whose lives depend on it. Next is the issue of policy. Very few countries have assistive tech programs and policies set in place. And often, even when they are set in place, they aren't satisfactory because they tend not to offer the necessary amount of goods and services. 
For example, in many European countries, the state provides older people with only one hearing aid, despite the fact that most people with age-related hearing loss require two hearing aids to properly function. Lastly, we have a lack of trained medical personnel. It's necessary that hospitals are equipped with qualified healthcare professionals who can analyze a patient's conditions and prescribe them with the right assistive technology. To overcome these barriers, spreading awareness is key. Understanding the barriers that specially abled people face in healthcare can help lawmakers and health professionals understand what they can do to alleviate that inequality. Things like prioritizing accessible transportation and affordable care for the specially abled can improve the health of over 1 billion people worldwide. So now that we've understood the barriers, why is it important that we ensure that everyone has access to assistive technology? Starting off with an improved equality of life. When an individual has access to assistive tech, they're able to live dignified lives filled with opportunities. Assistive tech can enable a specially abled person to thrive in the classroom and give them quality educational experience tailored to their needs. The World Health Organization reports that the proper use of hearing aids by young children leads to improved language skills. Making sure that this, this sort of assistive tech is received by the people who need it most also equips them for the future when it comes to employment opportunities. For example, a person who struggles with mobility may not be able to stand at a cashier a counter and work as a cashier, but with prosthetic limbs or a wheelchair, they are able to. Just this simple addition of assistive technology can enable a person to become financially independent and live a more healthy and dignified life. There are also direct benefits on health, but one of the main being the reduction of healthcare costs. With assistive technology, patients are at less risk of injury, so they don't have to travel back and forth to the clinic as frequently because their health is already being maintained. Even assistive technology as simple as wheelchairs have been linked to the reduced injury. The global impact of assistive technology is massive. It has the power to reduce poverty, increase education access, improve health, and empower over 2.5 billion people all across the world. It's so crucial that as a global community, we take steps in ensuring that every individual has access to affordable assistive technology, because one day we may all need it. These are my references. I'd like to thank the Global Health Leaders Conference at John Hopkins University for providing me with the opportunity to speak upon this subject, the voice of specially abled people, for the opportunity to volunteer alongside them and continue to make a change in the world. I'd like to thank my family for continually supporting me and my audience for so patiently listening. Thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me via my email or connect with me through LinkedIn. Thank you so much. Hmm.